There's mayhem at Heidi and Bridget's house. Oh, that goes right through my ear. With their trio of outrageously pampered pups. Oh, it gets worse. Heidi's over-the-top mothering. I love them like I birthed them. Okay. Has turned the dogs into nervous wrecks. So they actively hate the storm drapes, don't they? How bizarre. And has left Bridget with no control. She's used to me doing whatever she tells me. Can Victoria get these sisters to work together? When I put it there, you were like, too no, small. No, like I'm saying like that. Yeah, like that, and then like you were complaining with too small. Then you do it. Or will every step forward lead to two steps back? They are not your children. They are your dogs. Victoria Stillwell has been training dogs in Great Britain and the USA for nearly 14 years. Today, she's on her way to meet two sisters and their three Maltese. Dogs thrive on close relationships with their owners, but sometimes that bond can be too close. A person that emotionally smothers their dog can sometimes create a confused, unconfident, and possibly neurotic pet. You want to dance pretty? Dance pretty. <laughs> there we go. My name is Heidi, and I live here with my sister Bridget and my three dogs, Tilly, Jillian, and Pumpkin. <laughs> I love them so much. It's kind of like they are my children, and I did give birth to them. I think Heidi's allowed the dogs to take over her life. Heidi has many things for the dog. She has a closet full of clothes. Yeah. She has a stroller. Let's go, girls. Heidi is devoting less of her time to the outside world and more of her time to the dogs. Before she begins training, Victoria will spend the day observing the issues she is facing. Oh, my goodness, girls. Oh, my goodness, who's here? And the first problem is immediately apparent. As soon as I rang the doorbell, I heard high pitch, ear-splitting barks, and I was on the outside. Okay, who is it? Hello. Hi. Hey. Hi. Wow, whoa, hey, that's come on. loud. For hey. Me. Oh, 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 that goes right Pumpkin. through my ear. Pumpkin. Hey. hey. Heidi, nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Victoria. This is my sister Bridget. Bridget. Hello, Bridget. Nice, Bridget. nice to meet Good you. To meet you Girl. too. Pumpkin. Pumpkin. Well, I know one problem because I heard it. Yeah. How, how often does that happen? Only when the doorbell rings or? All the time. When people come in, when there's a noise outside, pretty much anything. We don't want to be the neighbors with the annoying dogs, and we are. <laughs> so what made you get three Maltese then? <laughs> That's a good It's all her. <laughs> oh, okay. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Well. No, it, well, it started with Tilly. When I first told Bridget about the idea, she was like, no, absolutely not. I was not. so against it. I was not. I was not on board. I was not keen about getting a dog. And initially, I got this one, Jillian. Um, well, it was actually Heidi that decided to get the second one. She decided um, that you know we won't be living together for the rest of our lives, hopefully. And so she said I would need to have a dog because there's no way I could continue to live my life without a dog. So she was like, I'll get you a dog. Let's let's get you a dog. So she got Jillian. And then you know a year goes by and she's like. We can't separate Jillian and Tilly. Uh, you know, it's just we have to get another one for when you move out. So it's kind of a reoccurring pattern. So um, that's why we, we ended up with Pumpkin. So essentially, Jillian is not Bridget's. She's mine. So wait a second. So she's not really Bridget's dog. She's yeah. your dog. Yeah. Even though you bought her for Bridget. Yes. Right. And she told me, this dog is for you. OK. Um, now, how much, how much um, time do you spend with the dogs? Not as much as Heidi. I just, I don't have a work schedule that allows me to um, come home as often. I would say that the primary caretaker role, it definitely falls on me because of my flexibility with my job and things like that. So, yeah, I don't know if Bridget lifts a finger. How do you see your relationship with the dogs? Um, I, you know, I kind of think of myself as mother. The mother. Yeah. Um, yes, you, of course you do. You correct people if they don't refer to you as their mommy. Let's go see Grandma. Come on, let's go see Grandma. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I don't know whether I'm here for children or for dogs. <laughs> so tell me about your relationship with Tilly then. She puts a smile on anybody's face that she meets, and so, you know, wanted to, to be a part of a therapy organization with her. I thought Tilly would make a really good therapy dog because who doesn't like a little white fluffy Maltese giving you that smile and, and helping bring a little joy? You know, we did have a test and essentially we failed and it was, it was devastating. Really? It really was. It was overwhelming. Like I just, I started sobbing. Right from the start, I can see what's up here. That Heidi has a lot of emotions invested in her dogs. Come on girls, this way. While Bridget okay. heads off to work, Victoria joins Heidi out on a walk. All right, girls, let's go. And quickly discovers Tilly and Jillian's unusual fear. 
so they actively hate the storm drains, don't they? Uh, They're pulling away from it. Very much so. I mean, Ooh. if you can see Tilly's just, she's scared. I have no idea why they're deathly afraid of storm drains. I do know that the only reason Jillian is afraid is because Tilly was afraid. I don't think Pumpkin's scared of it as much. She may just be going with the group. She senses the but... overall fear from it. How bizarre. So what about a social life? Do you have a social life? Um, you know, three dogs are a lot of responsibility. So, you know, if I'm out, I do have to get home to them. I don't like to leave them for more than a couple of hours. But does this affect your relationships? Uh, what relationships? Oh, so you don't have relationships? <laughs> um, with them, yeah. No, I'm I mean, talking about <laughs> relationships with people, with guys. I would say the dogs are the biggest part of my life right now. They're what I look forward to coming home to. They're who I sleep with. Um, so they are the best part of my day. If you go out with friends, you're always thinking about getting back to the dogs. Yeah, absolutely. Heidi's social isolation also leads to the dog's social isolation. Not allowing them to experience different environments, different places, different people, different dogs. She's actually making her dogs more neurotic. Here we go, come on. If the dogs are nervous outdoors, it's Pumpkin. clear Pumpkin feels equally anxious back at home. Pumpkin! Pom Pom? Pumpkin! Where's Pumpkin? When we got Pumpkin, we knew that she didn't walk upstairs. The houses that she'd been exposed to either didn't have stairs or, you know, it was just something that she never had to use. A little bit, Pumpkin. Come on. Heidi went three steps up and held a treat out for Pumpkin, and Pumpkin tried to lean forward to get that treat, but there was no way she was going to put even one little paw on the first step. She's stretching out, you know, stretching out to see if she can get it, but she can't. You're right. I think that Pumpkin is afraid of steps because she hasn't really had any experience with steps and how to go up or down them. Plus, I also think that she feels very unsettled because she slips on the shiny floors. Victoria's theory is proven right when she sees Pumpkin's uneasiness on the wood floor upstairs. It's okay. I know, it's okay. Come on, Pump. You can see she's shaking. Mm. That she's really shaking. Pumpkin just stood there and started to shake. It was really upsetting to see a dog so anxious and so uncomfortable about being on a wooden floor. Pumpkin, it's okay, sweetie. Could you give me that pillow that's up on there? Mm -hmm. Just the pillow part. So if I was to put something next door, next Jixi, if I was to put something next to her. She would go on that, wouldn't she? Yeah, and to she's get gonna off feel, it. She's going to feel a lot better. She stopped shaking. Immediately. You're Immediately. right. Immediately. If we were to leave the room right now, Pumpkin would be left stranded there for the rest of the day. She wouldn't move. It's OK. <laughs> Later in the day, Heidi's mom, Barbara, stops by to share her perspective on the situation. Tell me what you think of Heidi's relationship with the dogs. I think it's a little bit intense. She's actually said that she feels like she's given birth to them, and that was a little bit disturbing. <laughs> I don't feel like I gave birth to them. I love them like they were my own children, like I birthed them. OK. Yeah, no. <laughs> to demonstrate how far Heidi has gone with her obsession, Barbara brings Victoria upstairs. Here's the closet. We have every kind of outfit you can imagine. Look at this. A sundress. We have like a Christmas dress. I see a lot of people that anthropomorphize their dogs, meaning treating their dogs like their children. But dresses and pretty little sweaters and Santa outfits. Oh, why do you think? She does this. I think she's probably ready to have kids. Pumpkin, you want to put your sweater on? I worry about hiding because she doesn't have a social life. I really feel at a young age, a person should be out there doing things. Mom's actually pretty worried about Heidi. It's really clear that Heidi needs these dogs to love her. These dogs are fulfilling some emotional void in her life. Coming up. Heidi hears the hard truth from Victoria. You think they have anxiety problems? Yes, they do. Is she willing to take a step back? They are not your children. They are your dogs. Victoria Stillwell has spent a day observing the headaches that sisters Heidi and Bridget are dealing with in their home. Oh, my goodness, girls, who's here? 
Now it's time for her to sit down and share her thoughts. You have three Maltese that are displaying a lot of very neurotic behavior. You think they have anxiety problems? Yes, they do. Yes. They're all sound sensitive completely. Hear a noise and boom! Hey! Oh, oh, that goes right Pumpkin. through my ear. The terrified storm drains. Yeah. And you don't know why that happened. No. Is that a trauma? Or is it because they hear something down those drains that makes them uh, Oh, I didn't think about Remember? that. No. Sound sensitive dogs. They hear things that you don't even hear. Little pumpkin, she can't walk on the floors. Right. All of your house is basically wooden floors. This poor little dog is terrified in your own home. Come on, pumpkin. Come on. Tilly's therapy work. Yes. Have you ever seen a therapy dog working? No, in person I've not seen what a therapy dog does. All right. I think that when you're going through all the tests and everything, that's one thing. And of course, she failed miserably. You can't jump up on a child that has IVs coming from their arms. That's a really good point. Or an old person that has very thin skin. I think it's really important that when you have dogs that you don't baby them so much. And they are not your children. They are your dogs. Because when you start treating dogs like children, you take away the essence that is dog. Mm. And you actually make dogs more anxious. Bridget, why do you think Heidi is doing what she's doing with the dogs? Why? I think she's projecting her own issues onto the dogs. I yeah. think it's just my motherly instinct. I just, that's, that's, I guess, I think it's just how I behave and um, it's just, I guess, feeling needed. I like to feel needed by them, I guess. I don't feel like you're looking after you very well. I feel like there's a bit of a sadness there. You've got to put yourself first sometimes, in some situations, in some scenarios, and they will be fine. You need to be a more responsible owner in the right way. And so do you, Bridget, if you're going to be living in this house. You weren't ready for these dogs. No, I don't think so. I wasn't ready to take on that responsibility. And so it was sort of just thrust at me that, here, here's another one. But would you change anything? No, of course not. It's after the fact, and I love them more than anything. But I don't think I was ready for three. Are you used to getting your way? I don't think so. Yes, you are. She's the oldest. She's used to me doing whatever she tells me. You're going to do it my way now. Because I have the dog's best interests at heart. I think that if Heidi wants to move forward, I think she's going to have to allow for some changes and allow me to come in and step up. Victoria kicks off the training by addressing one of the dog's more annoying problems. One of the most I suppose irritating problems you have is that barking as if on cue. Yes. The thing that I'm going to address right now is what happens when they hear a sound. How do you stop them? You need to come up with a cue. That means stop. Mm -hmm. So normally I use whistles for this, but I think these dogs are so sound sensitive that they might be scared of the whistle. Oh, okay. So I want to use a word and the word is stop. And I'm going to charge this word up right now. Stop. In order to train the dogs that stop is a valuable Good. word, I charged the word up by saying stop and treating. Stop. Good. Stop. Good. Now that the word has meaning, Victoria puts it to use. The next stage of this training is to, while they're looking around and distracted doing something else, Stop. Good, pumpkin. Good. Pumpkin Stop. gets it quickly. Good, pumpkin. Stop. Good girl. And so does Tilly. Good, Tilly. Good, Tilly. Stop. But for Jillian, it's another mm -hmm. matter. No, Jillian. Stop. Out of the three of the girls, Jillian was definitely the slowest to learn the process. I'm going to have to work on that one. Stop. Good. Very good. As soon as Jillian's face came to me, she got a reward. Victoria has all three dogs paying rapt attention. Now it's Heidi's turn to see if she can do the same. I want you to wait until Jillian looks away. Good, nice. Stop. Good, very nice. Stop. Heidi seems to have gained control. 
Now Victoria wants to see if she can keep it when it counts. Stop! Good, good Tilly. Good pumpkin, Harry. Good. Not Jillian. No, right? no, but she she, she stopped. Stop. Okay. She did stop. There was a moment in the training where it all kind of it really clicked for me, and I could see that the girls were getting it, and so it was exciting to see that light at the end of the tunnel. This is going to be tough. It's a tough training, but you really take charge as that leader. Then they are going to stop when you ask them to stop when they're barking. Especially Jillian. Good girl. Jillian only listens to Heidi when she wants to listen to Heidi. Heidi has really turned Jillian into a bit of a brat. That's what happens when you really spoil your dogs. So Heidi and Bridget have a huge job on their hands. Coming up, it's Bridget's turn to take control. No, don't move. But is she up to the task? OK, come on. What did I say? I know, I know. No comment. Jillian? Oh. No, don't even look at her. Victoria has Heidi taking a more authoritative role with the dogs. Stop. Now she wants to increase the dog's independence, starting with Pumpkin on the stairs. I did not want to train on the main stairs because there are too many of them. They're extremely intimidating, especially for a little dog. In order to train Pumpkin to be OK on stairs, I created four steps. And on those four steps, I put carpet. So I want her to feel confident about going upstairs with carpet on before we start training her without carpet on. One, good girl. And what I'm doing. Victoria gently coaxes Pumpkin onto the first step yeah. using treats. Does she sort of have to do it on her own time and yeah. on her own? I'm not forcing her. Once Pumpkin braves the second step, Victoria moves the treat a little higher. It's all about giving your dog confidence. And then even higher. Very good. good girl. Very good. Yay, Pumpkin. Very good. Pumpkin really was excited. Her tail was wagging. And she was happy. She had no problems doing it. With Pumpkin becoming more sure-footed, Heidi and Bridget take turns. Good girl. This is a big deal for her, you know. Good girl, Pumpkin. Good girl. With Pumpkin gaining confidence, Victoria takes the training a step further. But that small change makes a huge difference for Pumpkin. You can, you can see even just removing the carpet from the stairs how this is a different deal. I very quickly found out that Pumpkin was not going to go up the wooden stairs. With the carpet removed, she couldn't deal with it. To ease Pumpkin's frustration, Victoria decides to meet her halfway with partially covered stairs. You don't want to get to the stage where the dog actually just gives up. They learn actually not to do it. Good girl. Good. Oh, yeah. There. For Pumpkin to get up those stairs with just a strip of carpet on them to feel wood under her front paws and carpet on her back paws, that was enough for me. Very good. <laughs> good, girl. good girl. Very If Pumpkin can have the mobility to go up, and around the house without the use of me or Bridget, it's gonna be amazing. After helping carve out a less anxious future for Pumpkin, Victoria now wants to work with Tilly and Jillian on their unusual anxiety around storm drains. To see these dogs have to just scrabble away from the drain because they're so scared of it is really sad. And again, I think it's just playing into the more neurotic side of their nature. Because Tilly and Jillian feed off each other, Victoria wants to work with each dog individually. First up is Heidi and Tilly. Go find. I'm going to use the go find game because it gives them something else to do rather than concentrate on. I feel scared. Go find. Good girl. So I wanted to start right on top of the storm drain because playing games with dogs in places where they're fearful can help a dog get over their fear. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk backwards and forwards over the storm drain. Good girl. There you go. Nice. So I want you to take her back over it. OK. And do what I did. OK. It's OK. Till, till. No, no, no. And don't. You see, that's Just... what, when you start speaking, till, 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 till. Yeah. Quickly like that to a dog, yeah. it can make them feel just a little bit more agitated. OK. I'm not going to let her scrabble away. I'm going to ignore that. And I'm going to wait for that leash to become less tense. Okay, so do that. Good, okay. 
So if she scrabbles away, stand there and ignore. Come on, Chill. Let's go. Good girl. Now, now don't pull. Wait. Good girl, Till. Nice. Good girl. Very nice. Put a treat in the middle Till. of that drain, the Till. middle of the circular bit. Right there. Good. Good girl. Come on. Proceed to walk off. Good girl. Very nice. It worked really well. I'm glad that I have a technique to use when they do that because in the past I really have just I've pulled them where they need to go. With Tilly showing promising signs of overcoming her fear, it's time for Bridget to work with Jillian. Make sure you wait until the leash is loose. No, don't move. It's still taut. It was frustrating because she wasn't getting it. I was thinking, is that me? Am I the problem? Is it Jillian? Come on. Don't. Okay, come on. What did I say? I know, I know. The no leash commenting. is taut. Jillian? Oh. No. I, nothing. I know, I know. I'm sorry. Only go find. Yeah. Don't even look at her. Okay. Wait. <clears throat> now, good. Put the thing on there. Go find. Go find. Go find. Good. That's it. Good. Now she's actually walking <laughs> onto the storm drain because she girl. wants to find it. When I saw that huge storm drain, I was skeptical. I wasn't sure if she was going to be able to do it. Um, but she did. Coming up. Victoria's no-nonsense approach. Soon as she pulls away from you, no BS, turn, turn around, around, off you go. Has Heidi confused? Pulling away from you, uh-uh. So. Victoria has been working with Heidi and Bridget to tackle one of Pumpkin's fears. Good girl. Very good. Now, she wants to address the dog's biggest phobia. Pumpkin obviously has this fear of being on these floors. I have these mats. And I'm going to put a mat so that one runs into the kitchen, and then I'm gonna place mats in areas all around the kitchen. So that's gonna be her little pathway. Pumpkin can walk on the wooden floors around the rugs in the living room because she knows that the rugs are close. So I wanted to use the same idea for the kitchen. She normally comes to just about here, mm -hmm. so I'm going to break that line. Sure enough, as soon as the mats go down, Pumpkin ventures in. Just sort of here. So I'm going to throw bits of food onto the different mats. Good girl. So she has to walk across the wooden floor to get it. Go find. And I'm asking her to go find because that's part of the game. I mean, there's not a hesitation, not one hesitation. Pumpkin did great in the kitchen. She was trotting from carpet to carpet, going for the treats, not really noticing that I think that the, that the wood floor was underneath her. As Pumpkin's confidence grows, Victoria starts to remove the mats. Now she's on the floor, just on the floor. Go find Good girl. But as the mats disappear... This is kind of her threshold. Yeah. This is what's really difficult for her. Yeah. So does Pumpkin's courage. Uh, there was some hesitation, but the way Victoria explained it is that, you know, that will happen until she's more comfortable. Good girl. Goes back to find her mat and her stability. Good girl. Heidi was impressed to see Pumpkin just walking around the kitchen. What a difference from the time I observed her to now. With Pumpkin's training progressing well, Victoria wants to focus on Tilly's future. But first, she wants Heidi to observe a real therapy dog at work in a local rehabilitation center. Heidi is interested in Tilly becoming a therapy dog, but I don't know if she really knows what that entails. There you go, sweetheart. <laughs> there you go. So having these dogs here makes you feel good? Yeah, it's relaxing. You can see she's very calm. She's very calm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If this was her dog right at the moment, it would be up like this. It would be up <laughs> like that. Yeah. You need to have a dog that likes being touched. Tilly is a million miles away from being a therapy dog like Daisy. Maybe. Half a million. <laughs> I never really thought about the little things that Tilly does, like the, you know, the jumping up or the licking. It was really put into perspective how vitally important it is to have a well-behaved dog. Now that Heidi has an idea of the long road ahead, Victoria brings her to a nearby park to begin working with Tilly. Now, the cones I've set out here, there's a reason for that. One of the most essential things that a therapy dog needs to do is to walk really well close to the owner on a loose leash just going to walk up and down here and see if I can get her walking close to me. When Victoria told me that we were going to do the loose leash training with Tilly, I was super worried because Tilly has never been one to walk by my side. Up. Let's go. 
Whenever she pulls you in one direction, you go off in the other direction with a let's go. Good. Mm -mm. Let's go. Close. I want you to be unpredictable. Good girl. Now it's Heidi's turn. I turn. Dan, she's okay. pulling away from you. Just pull her away, go on. Don't let her stand there and go. Okay. The toughest part about the loose leash walk is that I just, I don't seem to have any control over Tilly. It, it's hard to get her to look my way or pay attention to me. No, I, I... As soon as she pulls away from you, no BS, turn, turn around, around, off you go. Okay. Yeah, I want you to take a bit more direction. Tilly. Good girl, close. Good. Nice. Close. Ah. Come on. Very good. Good girl, Tilly. Come on. Nice. Close. Good girl. Very good. Yeah. Now let's make it a little bit difficult. Close. Good Now girl. that Heidi is a little more in control. Very good time. Good girl, really Tilly. like that. Tilly. Victoria has her navigate Tilly through a set of cones. Tilly. Good girl. Okay. Very good. Tilly. Sit. Good girl. Though Tilly's loose leash walking is impressive, Victoria is still concerned about her inability to interact with strangers. So she sets up a test at a nearby community center. If Heidi really wants Tilly to become a therapy dog, she has to give Tilly a broad range of experiences to various people and to children, to a person in a wheelchair, to a person with a walker, because those are all of the things that she's going to encounter when she does hospital visits. Hey. Hi, what's that? Oh, ho, ho. hi. When I took Tilly over to the children, she was interested, she said hello, but she was much more interested in discovering what was on the floor. A therapy dog has really got to connect with people and want to connect with people, but Tilly's much more interested in everything else except the people. You can't have her going round a hospital environment like this. Is there not a certain amount of you know, she has to get familiar with it and be comfortable with the environment. Of course, when you go into a hospital, they have to be comfortable with that environment right away. The whole process of what a therapy dog does and what it entails is kind of what I expected, but all the work behind it that I didn't really think was involved is so much more than I thought. For Tilly and the other dogs to improve, Heidi and Bridget will have to work hard for the next few days alone. Bridget, now it's sisters working together. So I'm hoping now that you now know your role, that you are there to help. You're there to help with the walking. You're there to help with the, the training around the storm drains. You're gonna be doing exactly the same training as Heidi's doing. There's gonna be consistency, no arguments. I know you've got a lot of work to do, but I would like you to be able to go out Leave the dogs, they'll be fine. I hope to see a few results when I get back. Okay. Okay? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Good luck. Bye. Bye. Thanks. I'm a little bit nervous now that Victoria's gone. I'm a little overwhelmed at how much work there's, that's required of us. Coming up, Heidi's overbearing attitude pushes Bridget to the brink. Can you do it? And a frustrated Heidi gives up. Tilly, this is ridiculous. Watch me. Having made great progress training Heidi and Bridget's three neurotic Maltese, Victoria's left the girls to work on their own. Already, Heidi and Bridget have been putting the stop command to good use. Girls, stop! Good girls, good girl. Pumpkin, come. I think the girls are really getting a hang of the stop command. Good They're job. listening really well. Bridget, that was good. That was awesome. Good job, girls. Stop! It's life-changing to be able to get the girls to stop barking when we ask them to stop. Yeah. <laughs> Pumpkin is also making remarkable progress with her fear of wood floors. I'm so proud of Pumpkin. I feel like she's a million miles away from where she was when Victoria first arrived. Good girl! That was amazing! Come on, let's go. Now she's just comfortable to walk around the wood floors knowing that there's a mat nearby. Later in the week, Victoria checks in on the sisters' progress. Today, Heidi is taking Victoria's advice and spending a few hours out with friends and away from the dogs. I met some friends, went for drinks, and the girls did enter my mind while I was out. I think it's only natural that I think about them, but I feel like I'm making steps towards leaving them at home. While Heidi is out enjoying some independence... Good girl, Jillian. Bridget has taken the opportunity to work with Jillian near the storm drain. I was nervous about the storm drain training because I wasn't sure if she would have the confidence to do it just me and her. 
Bridget waits for Jillian to relax before urging her closer with the go find game. Go find. Go find, Jillian. Good girl. Well done, Bridget. The more you do this, the more confident Jillian will be, and soon she'll be passing storm drains without any problem at all. OK, you want to practice? You want to practice? The girls have also been working together to ease Pumpkin's aversion to the stairs. Go get it. Good job. That Beautiful. Was amazing, that Pumpkin. was very fluid. Yes. Pumpkin's confidence seems to improve with every step, but Heidi's controlling habits are only getting worse. That is tiny. Put it in the far corner. I want to do. Don't tell me where to put it. Heidi has definitely tried to, to pull the boss card, but I've had to keep it in check. Turn them up smaller. Heidi, when I put it there, you were like, it's too no, small. No, no, like I'm saying like that. Yeah, like that, and then like you that were amount. playing it was too small. No. Yes, you were. When I put it there, you're like, well, I'm just saying it. I want her to get sick. It's like, it's too small, it's too big. Like, that's too big. Maybe put it more in the middle. She seemed to be a little hesitant on that side. Then you do it. All right. <laughs> Heidi, I thought you were going to allow Bridget to step up and do more of the training. You need to back off and give her some more space. Heidi continues to take control outside, where she's determined to get Tilly comfortable with the storm drains. Tilly, ah, ah, Tilly. But Tilly is putting Good up girl. a fight. Seriously, we're not even close to the storm drains. It's 10, 12 feet away Tilly. that she gets scared of the storm drain. So it is a really frustrating process. Tilly, all right. This and is Heidi right. quickly gives up. We'll do that all day. Heidi, you're working with deep-rooted anxiety here. You need to be patient and keep working at it. Uh Later on, Heidi works on loose leash walking in the hopes of Tilly. preparing Tilly for another attempt at her therapy dog test. Good girl, Tilly. The biggest thing that I'm worried about Victoria seeing when she comes back is Tilly's loose leash walking. Uh but Tilly's attention is everywhere except uh on Heidi. Heidi, Tilly's all over the place. You need to keep calm and keep her focused. Till. I think Tilly's done an amazing job with the loose leash training. I'm really pleased with her progress. Ah. By the looks of things, ah. Tilly's nowhere near ready to take the therapy test again. Despite Tilly's underwhelming improvement, Heidi is relentlessly pushing forward, bringing Tilly to her friend's house to work on socialization. All right. The biggest hurdle for Tilly to overcome is just um, being comfortable in new places with new people. Once again, Tilly's attention is all over. Hi, Tilly. Oh, Tilly. you're such a good girl. Tilly. 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 I know. Till. Till. Just sit down. And she has to be held to stay on the sofa. Heidi, what are you doing? Tilly's clearly uncomfortable in your friend's lap. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Oh. Good girl, Till. Aww. There's a little bit of room for improvement, but really, at the end of the day, um, I think she did a great job. The next time the testing comes up for the therapy dog, I really think Tilly's going to pass. First, you lose your patience, and now you're literally forcing Tilly to be in your friend's lap. I know you want Tilly to be a therapy dog, but you're going about this the wrong way. I'm going to come back and have a chat. Victoria is returning to Heidi and Bridget's home to discuss their progress with the training. Girls, stop. Come on in. Girls, watch me. Hello. Come on in. Girls. Good girls. Good girls. Good girls. Oh, wow. How do you like that? Wow, that is some control over that barking. Isn't that incredible? That is incredible. I think Victoria was really <laughs> proud of us. And so um, I'm pleased with how Victoria reacted to our, um, our stop training. So I've been watching your progress. And I have to say, very good. But I saw when Bridget, you were trying to do the stairs that Heidi, you were being really controlling again. You're like, no, don't do it like this, do <laughs> the it like this. The pieces were too big. Heidi, don't control Bridget so much. OK, do take a step back. OK. All right, so we still have work to do today. There's a couple of things I want to work on. Let's get to it. All right, okay. let's go. Let's go. Come on, pumpkin. 
Pumpkin has made such progress. She's now walking into the kitchen on the wood floors, no problem. She's going up the stairs that I made her, no problem. Now it's time to take it to the real stairs. I've chosen these stairs because there's only five of them. Victoria places a mat on the landing and strips of carpet on the stairs for added traction. Then she entices Pumpkin step oh, by step. Girl. Oh, she's so good. Yes, she is. Very good. I'm going to talk to her in a very high little tone. Oh, good girl. Lovely. Put it up there. Good. Very nice. Very nice. I put a bit of food on the first stair. She put her two front paws up on it and ate the food. Good result. With her front paws up, Victoria provides the last little boost. Yes! <laughs> Good girl! Pum -pum. Good job, Pum Pum. <laughs> I was floored when I saw Pumpkin run up those stairs. She has never, in the year that she has been here, attempted, tried anything close to what she, went, what she did today. Try that again. Good. Good. Yes! Pumpkin. Pumpkin. Pumpkin! My heart was racing. I was so excited for her, and I was so proud of the job that the pumpkin did. Good girl. Very good. With pumpkin moving in the right direction, Victoria brings Tilly and Heidi to a neutral location so she can work on improving Tilly's focus. The real thing that's hampering this whole therapy dog process is the fact that she doesn't have great focus on you. You spent many, many years loving her and pampering her, and but she's never really listened to you when you've asked her to do something. No, she hasn't. She ignores you? Mm -hmm. She does. OK. How are you going to get her to focus on you? I wanted to do an exercise where Heidi was just to stand there and wait for Tilly to look at her. When Tilly did look at her, Tilly got a reward. Good girl, Till. Good Very girl. Good. Nice. Good girl, That's... Till. Good girl, Tilly. Good girl. Good girl. Instead of asking a dog for attention, you wait until the dog gives you attention. So the dog works out, if I give her attention, something good happens to me. With Heidi holding good Pumpkin's girl. focus, Victoria has her take it a step further. Good. Now let's do some loose leash walking up and down with her close to you. OK. Her focused on you, OK? okay. Good girl, Till. Good. good girl. That's good loose leash walking. Come on. Excellent, Till. From that time on, Tilly was walking up and down with Heidi, always focusing on her, Faster. walking right by her side, giving Heidi focus. The breakthrough had been made. Everything that I've seen with Tilly, I think she could make a good therapy dog. That would be wonderful. Yeah. Keep working at it. When I first came here and I saw these indulged neurotic dogs and a person who really was just living in this cocoon, now you've changed. Now you've seen them in a different light. You know a different way to handle them. It's, it's more of a two-way street now. Before it was a one-way street, but now it's a two-way street. And Heidi, let Bridget help. The two-way street, I guess, goes there, too. It does. In the short amount of time that we have spent with Victoria, She's changed our lives immeasurably. I think she, Victoria has fostered a better living environment for Bridget and myself and the girls, so um, we're really going to miss her. All right, well, good luck. OK, and well done. Thank, Thank you, you so much. All right, I'll see you again. Bye. Bye, -bye. Thank you. Bye. Heidi recognizes now that being a responsible dog owner is not just loving and indulging your dog. Being a responsible dog owner is actually giving your dog the opportunity to be challenged to go through thought processes, to problem solve, to really experience life. And I really think that from now on, Heidi is going to give her dogs the ability to do that. Pumpkin, come. 
Good girl, Pumpkin. Yeah. Good girl. Yeah. Things have been going great since Victoria left. Heidi and I have been working together as a team, um, and it's been going great. Good girl, Pump. Good job. Good girl. Having Pumpkin now do the stairs and the floors, life is so much easier. Stop! Good girl. Come here, come. Sit. Good job. The girls are barking a lot less. I mean, they're still barking. I mean, that's never going to go away. But um, the barking has decreased significantly. Good girls. Good girls. I am glad to see you because we haven't seen each other in such a long time. I know. I, I know. Well, it's good to get out. I go out a lot more without the dogs now. If Bridget's here, that's great. If she's not, I'm comfortable leaving them too because I know that, you know, that just makes it more rewarding when I get home. Okay. Sit down, Till. With the socialization aspect of things, um, Tilly and I have been working on going to new places, meeting new people, and every time that she does, she just, she makes more progress. Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site, Positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.